Standing outside of the old city of Jerusalem, you can see the old city wall in the background there. And just to the right behind those buildings is the Damascus Gate. And in Hebrews 13 verse 12 it says that Jesus suffered outside of the city gate. And then in John 19 verse 20 it says that Jesus was crucified near to the city. So this site is both outside of the city gate and yet near to the city. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John all identify the place where Jesus was crucified as the place of the skull. And in John 19 verses 17 and 18 John says that Jesus was crucified at the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is Golgotha. John wrote that in the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden and a tomb. And very close by here, an ancient water cistern has been found. So here's the opening to that cistern. You can see water running down there. Also discovered at this site is in an ancient wine press. So grapes harvested in this garden would be pressed here. And archaeologists date this as being approximately 2,000 years old. In John chapter 20, verse 15, we read of how Mary, when she first saw Jesus, she didn't recognize him and supposed that he was the gardener. So this is a tomb, which has been found here, hewn out of the rock. And it's in Matthew chapter 27, verse 60, where it specifies that the tomb in which Jesus was buried was hewn out of the rock. And the floor here, as well as the tomb itself, are all of one stone. Scripture says that this place belonged to Joseph of Arimathea and Matthew specifies that he was a rich man and that's in Matthew 27 verse 57. So obviously to have a tomb of this sort you'd have to be rich considering the type of tomb and its location in this garden. And scripture speaks of a stone that was rolled in front of the entranceway of the tomb. And you can clearly see here a channel or a trough which would have enabled the stone to be rolled back and forth. And it also speaks in the book of Matthew of how a seal was placed on the tomb. You can see the remains of what appears to be a seal. So entering the tomb itself, it's necessary to stoop down to enter because it's only about four and a half feet or even less than that. And in Luke 24, Verse 12, it speaks of how Peter had to stoop down to enter the tomb. And then right now you're looking at almost like a bed that has been hewn out of the rock, the likely spot where Jesus' body was laid. The woman who came to the tomb found angels here, one sitting at the place where Jesus' feet had been and another where his head had been. And there's almost a raised area there to the left, almost acting as a pillow 
for the head, and there's more than enough room for a body to lie fully extended. Mark 16, verse 5 says that when they entered the tomb, they found someone in white, in a white robe, sitting on the right side of the tomb. And sure enough, the open space in this tomb is on the right side. You can also see here a place for another body to be laid, but it was never completed. At the foot there, it's, uh, it hasn't been fully carved out as it has been on this side. And John 19, verse 41, specifies that the tomb in which Jesus was buried was a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. The fact that this one had been completed, and this other bed was never fully completed, suggests that uh, Joseph intended for this tomb to hold at least two people, but after Jesus was buried here, it was considered too sacred to bury anyone else. So the construction of the tomb, and the second bed specifically, was not followed through with. So for numerous reasons, with the different lines of converging evidence, this seems to be the place where Jesus was crucified, buried, and where he rose again.